Hey guys, it's Melvin7 here. Today I'm bringing you Transfer Rumours. It's finally back after two weeks because I'm back from holiday. But anyway, this one is just going to recap some of the biggest moves slash rumours as of now. Obviously, there's been hundreds, literally, in the last two weeks. And I can't cover them all. I'm only going to cover the very biggest and the most up-to-date rumours as well. So, the first one is N'Golo Kante, who has completed a £32 million move to Chelsea. Now, this, in my opinion, along with Henrik Mkhitaryan to Manchester United, are the two best summer signings so far in terms of value for money, in terms of what they bring, in terms of what the teams need. And uh, yeah, I just think it's a stunning signing, regardless of what the fee is, £32 million. Obviously, he's only been in the Premier League one year. Leicester have made over 25 million with this deal they bought him for 5.5 million but he's worth every penny of that especially if he brings the form he did for Leicester to Chelsea which I'm sure he will because his manager is obsessed with workhorses he he demands 110% from every single player and that's something that Kante guarantees so Chelsea have instantly made the core of their squad so much stronger and yet yeah, it is definitely alongside Henrik Mkhitaryan in my opinion the the best transfer of this window so far and the next one we've got is David Moyes who has finally got another job in the Premier League after an unsuccessful spell with Manchester United and then a relatively unsuccessful spell with Real Sociedad in La Liga he's got a new job and that's manager of Sunderland now I put a tweet back in 2015 saying Sunderland should go for David Moyes and uh, obviously with Sam Allardyce departing for England They've now got David Moyes. I think he is the perfect choice. And I reckon if he stays at Sunderland for a long length of time, which is something they need, they need a bit of longevity. Their turnover of managers, they've been a little bit unlucky. Gus Poirier, Dick Advocate, Sam Allardyce, you know, all did very well, but for whatever reason have left. And uh, I think this is their fourth manager in three years. So they need a bit of longevity. And I think that's something David Moyes can provide. You look at what he did for Everton. Absolutely fantastic work. Longevity, 10, 11 years. And for the last, I think it was six-ish, they were um, main... Well, they were uh, always in the top eight. In, in or around there, you know, they were getting in Europe uh, now and again. And yeah, it is a very, very good signing by Sunderland. And I generally believe... He's the type of coach that suits their club. Obviously, Manchester United, bit too big for him. Didn't suit the style. Just wasn't a Manchester United manager. But for Sunderland, I think he can bring great success. And, uh, well, when I say success, I mean longevity in the Premier League. Obviously, pushing anything higher at this day and age. I mean, it's possible. Look at Leicester. But it, it's going to be increasingly more difficult. But I think they're going to be safe. A lot of people think they're going to get relegated. But under Moyes, I really think they're going to do very, very well. Next, we've got Higuain, who is all but set to join Juventus. He's done his medical, he's, uh, he's signed the contract apparently, but the only thing left is for uh, sorry Juventus to actually pay the 94 million release clause. Well, that's euros, which equates to about 78.7 million pounds, which also makes it the third biggest deal unless a certain other name gets done soon after it. But yeah, that would be the third biggest deal ever. And um, yeah, a lot of people are obviously looking at the size of the fee and thinking, wow, like, geez, that's, that's insane. But um, I mean, for Juventus, it's not really, especially if they get the money from a certain other player, which I'll go through, who, who's been talked about till everyone's bored to death by it. But anyway, um, when they get the money from that, if they get the money from that, then uh, yeah, it's not going to be as big of a, 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 a deal as you think. It's hard to explain, but obviously they're spending a lot of money. Juventus don't usually do that. And uh, he is the best uh, striker in Syria. According to a lot of people who watch Syria, he's the best player in Syria in terms of his performances last season, he was anyway. So, you know, them taking especially a close rival's best player, which they've already done with Roma, they've already took Pjanic. So now they're taking Higuain. It, it all but certainly, even if a certain midfielder leaves, um, it almost guarantees them the Serie A title. I mean, they've got Dybala and Higuain as a, as a partnership. That is unbelievable. The only one question, well, obviously the fee, but fans won't give a shit about the fee. If he delivers, no one cares. Yes, he's 29, very expensive for a player of that age, but in Serie A terms, 
is very, very good. Obviously, they won Champions League success, and he's a very, very good player, but for some reason, some unknown reason, whenever he gets to a final, he seems to bottle it, no matter what it is, World Cup final, uh, Copa America, particularly for Argentina, but... Um, I don't know, he, he just seems to underperform in finals and that leads people to believe that he's not world class but he is, he definitely is and I've seen a lot of people saying that if Pogba uh, does eventually go, they've obviously got rid of Morata that they've upgraded with Higuain and Pjanic as of now, yes, they are both better players than what is currently there don't get me wrong, Pogba is extremely close to Pjanic and you know, he'll overtake him Given uh, like given another year, he'll be better than what Pjanic ever was, and that's five years younger than what he is. But as of now, it is. But it's also something that Juventus are going to have to look at. They're going to have to uh, replace them in a couple of years. Whereas Pogba, Morata, they're young. They're going to get better. Morata could potentially get better than what Higuain is now. So they've got that problem. They've only got these players for a few years. So instead of having long-term stability they're going to have to overturn them quickly so as of now they're probably stronger with those two players in but it's temporary whereas if they've managed to keep hold of Pogba which they might obviously Morata they haven't because of the buyback clause for Real Madrid but if they had then the team in the long run would be far better than what it is when they've got Higuain and uh, also Pjanic in it but anyway Aside from that, I've mentioned his name about a billion times already, but the next one is Paul Pogba. This Sega saga, sorry, that never seems to end. Hopefully will end in some regard this week. It is getting ridiculous. You're hearing conflicting reports, all of this bullshit, but what I believe generally is what Damasio and a few others have said. It's 120 million euros that Juventus won. The latest offer, as of now, it, we might have submitted another one, but we'll wait for news was 110 million plus 10 million add-ons in terms of euros. Juventus rejected, they want it all up front. They also want us to pay the full fee to Mino Raiola. Now, there's the Higuain deal. Uh, some are saying that this has to be done before Pogba gets announced. And it, it's just a complete mess. But the facts are, Raiola is with uh, Pogba in Miami. Um, we have submitted bids. We bids. Sorry, we really want this player. We're close to an agreement. There's also Real Madrid, who've apparently came back into it. But I wouldn't worry about that. Like they, they aren't going to be able to afford what we can. Pogba, his preferred destination is Real Madrid. We all know this. There's no point as Manchester United fans uh, arguing that his preferred destination is Real Madrid. But they cannot afford him. So his second choice destination is Manchester United. It might be staying at Juventus, you never know. He might still stay at Juventus, but uh, from what I've heard, from what uh, is all being talked about, the deal is all but done. Um, it's just waiting for signatures or waiting for Higuain to move or waiting for, you know, a small fee to be agreed, like a difference of five to eight million pounds. And yeah, it just, it's dragging on. There's so many conflicting reports. United fans again really worried that it won't happen because the Real Madrid factor, but you have to, Remember, there's a lot of games when it comes to uh, like mind games, a lot of agents trying to you know feed stories or clubs trying to feed stories. And then you've also got the mentality of a club when it comes to the media and also when it comes to actual negotiations. They can feed the media whatever they want. I mean, for example, the Juventus president, Mor Morata, I think is how you say it, but anyway, uh, he a few days ago fed that Manchester United hadn't even contacted for Pogba or was it um, their manager El Agri or however you say it. but then they said that they they were in talks with him they don't know if he's going to stay they just brief the media whatever they want the media to hear this Real Madrid rumour could be scare tactics I mean I do generally think Zidane wants him but I think Florentino Perez understands they can't afford him and I don't think he's as keen on him as Zinedine Zidane is so I don't think Real Madrid is a factor. I don't think he's going to go there. He's either going to stay at Juventus or go to Manchester United. But one thing's certain, it will be done within a week. There's numerous reports saying Jose Mourinho wants to uh, get this done by no later than the end of July. If it's not complete, then he's just going to move on to another target. Um, there's also reports of Juventus wanting it done. Another big factor, Higuain's close ends in, I think, five or six days. 
and uh, when that ends, Napoli won't sell. No matter what they offer, they won't sell. So they have to hit that close. Of course, they've got money from other potential sales like Regani, like um, Zaza. But realistically, they don't have the funds as of now. So it, it is tied in with this Pogba deal. And personally, my thoughts on the matter, I reckon Higuain's going to get announced. And then the day after, Pogba will. I think we finally sorted the agent fees out with Manuel Riola. Uh, we'll probably agree to pay those. But I think we were also waiting to try and see what Juventus would do as the Higuain close ends. So they're going to have to eventually buckle and pay their half of the Riola fee. It's just really confusing. People are getting irritated. It's getting boring. It's, it's, ah, everyone just wants it to end. And it will within a week. And I've dragged on for about 10 minutes on this, so I do apologise. Didn't really intend to. But anyway, we'll move on to the next target. Hopefully Pogba will be done to Manchester United soon. If not, his future will be announced. And Juventus, Real Madrid, Manchester United, whatever. We'll see. Anyway, next we've got Riyad Mahrez, heavily linked to Arsenal. This would be a fantastic signing for Arsenal. Um, I think Morris is torn between staying at Leicester and going to Arsenal. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. Will Arsenal actually pay the fee? It's uh, rumoured that they will. Uh, Gazidis, their chief executive, I think, said that uh, their squad's already strong enough. But uh, Wenger said that they will spend if they find a play. It's Wenger says the same shit every single year. It must be infuriating for Arsenal fans. Oh, well, if there's a player of quality in the market and we, we like him, you know, he suits our profile, then we'll go and get him. Uh, so maybe Mares does. Maybe it'll be one that's done, but we'll have to wait and see with that. He's currently on tour with Leicester, who are in the United States same as Arsenal so if it is going to get done you would imagine it's going to be done pretty quickly one thing I don't understand well I do actually but uh you know if they spend big on Morris fantastic their midfield absolutely ridiculous their wingers absolutely ridiculous yet they still refuse to spend money on a striker and I think that links into what Arsene Wenger is saying that uh, there's no quality strikers available for the price that he wants to pay. He never wants to overpay for a player, which is what you've got to do now. Higuain, Pogba, of course, if these deals go through, it's overpaying. Do the fans give a fuck? No, as long as you get the player that you need. Our club needs a Pogba player. Juventus need a striker like Higuain because they've just lost Morata. So, you know, it makes sense. But Arsenal need a striker. Are they ever going to get one? We'll have to wait and see, but Mares would be a fantastic buy, and let's see if that one happens. Next, we've got Andre Gomez moving to Barcelona, thwarting Real Madrid in the process. This is the target they wanted instead of Pogba, which is why there's rumours of them going back for Pogba. A very, very highly sought-after Portuguese central midfielder who used to play for Valencia, and he was scouted by all the biggest teams, and he's went to Barcelona, so... Yeah, maybe this is a direct replacement for uh, Iniesta and, you know, he's getting on so in a couple of years Andre Gomez can fill his uh, boots so as to speak. But yeah, I think this is a very, very good deal. Boss getting some decent transfers done this summer and uh, they look stronger for it. And the last ones we've got are Goethe and Schürrle completing moves to Borussia Dortmund. They, they are on fire this market. They may have lost so many players in Hummels, Mkhitaryan, uh, well... I was going to say uh, Subitic, but obviously he's got that long-term injury now. Um, Gundogan, they've lost some quality players, but they've also bought so many great ones. Youngsters like Moore, like Dembele. Now they've got Schürrle, they've got Goethe. You know, they're going to be a threat and a force. Of course they are. They've got Royce, Goethe, Schürrle assisting Aubameyang. So, yeah, I think they're going to be fine next season and they'll still be able to challenge Bayern Munich. So, hopefully you have enjoyed. Let me know what you think about all the rumours. If there's any big ones I've missed, let me know in the comment section. I'll try and cover them in tomorrow's episode, but hopefully you have enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video. And yeah, peace.